Okay, hello people. This is uh, what I call the Bob special because um, Bob was actually helping um, a student at his work with this problem. So it's kind of um, a little bit hard to explain, but the idea is this. You, you, you have a poster here and sometimes in printing they actually say we have exactly um, you know, this number of square inches that, that for text, but depends on the space. So they call it a poster, but basically the idea is, you know, do you want to have like a long and skinny, like I used to work in advertising. So you could say we want a quarter page or an eighth page, um, but it has to fit the same amount of text. So um, I'll just to prove to you here, what I'm saying is that this area doesn't change. So I'm going to actually measure that area here. And that is 3.84 centimeters, which is, you know, I had to multiply everything by one one hundredth or else it would never fit on this page. So as I move this, you can see that the dimensions of that inside square here do not change. However, the margins are six inches this way and six inches this way and four inches to the sides. Now, again, that's 0.04 in, you know, this simulation, but still going to have the same numbers. So what's surprising to pretty much everyone, I, I don't know, to me it seems totally counterintuitive, but the area of this whole thing is actually changing. So now if I measure the area of that, now if I change the inside dimension, see how the area of the outside of the whole thing changes. So what we want to do is um, minimize the area of the whole kit and caboodle there. So I'm going to show you a graph what the graph looks like. And again, I will give you step-by-step -step instructions for how to create it in just a second. But when we look at the graph, we see it looks very similar, actually, at least in part to the one that we just did with the um, uh, boat. So once again, it look, we want to minimize it. So we're guessing it's going to be somewhere, you know, around, well, these are off the scale, but somewhere around in here. And so, uh, as we always have done, we're going to have to take the derivative of this function. So I'm going to just show you the derivative. And uh, again, it's a bizarre little function here. Um, but what we're saying here is uh, we want to figure out where that derivative crosses the axis, where the derivative is zero. And notice it looks like it's right in between, uh, somewhere in between 10 and 20. So let's see, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16. It looks like it crosses at 16. So my guess is that the answer to this problem is 16. Uh, but again, what's interesting to think about is um, what is on this axis here, I, I forgot to tell you that, right, um, is the x, which is this coordinate here. So um, what we're saying is when, when we make x very small, the whole area is very large. But when we make x really large, the area hits a minimum somewhere around here uh, and then actually starts just to go up a little bit more, right? Because then the, uh, the derivative is positive after that. Fascinating function, I think. All right, so this is the idea of it. This is using all the calculus of it. Now let's go to the uh, picture of it. Here we are. So again, this um, inside is 384, and that is the area of x times y. So x times y is 384, and whenever x changes, the y has to adjust itself so that this 384 remains the same. Now, there was 4 inches on the two sides. Oops, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. And there was 6 inches on the top and bottom. So if I call this y, then this is y plus 6 and y plus 6 more. So y plus 12 for the whole deal. And over here we have x and then 4 and 4, so x plus 8. So the area that we want to um, maximize has a an area of x plus 8 times y plus 12. That's what I have written here. The other function we know is that the inner one, x times y, is always 384. So, uh, as usual, we have to solve for one of the variables. Generally speaking, you know, we like to solve for x, but it truly doesn't matter. So I just said, okay, I mean, I solve for y. So y is equal to 384 over x, or 384 times x to the negative 1. Again, using negative and fraction exponents is just to anticipate, because we know we're going to be taking a derivative soon. So I multiplied this out. You can say x times y, or xy, 
plus 12 times x plus 8 times y plus 8 times 12, which is 96. And um, I could have substituted in the y right here, or I could multiply it out and then substitute it in. So um, let's just go up here. Now we have xy. Well, I know that xy is 384. So I go 384 plus 12 times x, that stays the same, and then 8 times y. So eight, since y is 384 over x, I have 8 times 384 over x plus 96, the same 96. Now that I have um, my total area defined with respect to just one independent variable, I can take dA dx. So this is a constant. Derivative of 12x is 12 plus, notice I don't, I try not to multiply this out, right? But this is 384 times x to the negative 1. So when you take the derivative, you get negative 384 times x to the negative 2. So that's where this negative came from. And then x to the negative 2 becomes x squared. And then the final uh, term here is 96, which has a derivative of 0 as well. So then I just bring the 12 over to the other side and do a little bit of cross multiplication. And we get x squared is equal to 8 times 384 divided by 12 which is 256. Isn't that nice? So x is the square root of 256, only the positive. Normally we'd say plus or minus, but it doesn't make sense to have a dimension of a poster in, um, you know, negative land. Uh, so we end up with 16 inches uh, is either the min or the max, depending. And then y, I just substitute back in, divide 384 by 16, and I get 24. And 16 is what we counted over here when we set the derivative equal to 0. So hopefully this um, algebraic, you can see how the algebraic relates to the graph and the derivative. And uh, that covers that one. So now you're going to do great on the little quiz. I mean the little um, blackboard quiz. Bye.